Hey everyone, now that we have a basic understanding of taxes, we're actually going to file our taxes. So the first thing we're going to need to do is go to irs.gov, it's a website right up here, okay, and we're going to look at forms and publications, and we're going to click on the 1040EZ. We're going to use the 1040EZ form because it's easier to fill out and it's less time consuming than the other forms, okay, the 1040A and the 1040. So I'm going to walk you through step by step filling out the 1040EZ for Jose D. Cuevas. Okay, so we're going to use this W-2 and the following information to fill out the 1040EZ tax form. Okay, Jose D. Cuevas is single and wants to contribute to the presidential campaign fund. Okay, he has $150 in taxable interest income from a savings account and cannot be claimed by anyone else. Jose is an accountant and his phone number is 201-555-5555. Here is Jose's 1040EZ form. I have already filled out the information at the top. This is the personal information that the tax form is going to ask you for. It's going to ask you for name, address, and your social security number, and whether or not you want to contribute to the presidential campaign fund. I've already filled this information in because we are more interested in the actual dollar amounts and how the rest of the form works. Okay, so now we're going to look at number one. And number one states wages, salaries, and tips. Okay, this should be shown in box one of your W-2. So we need to take a look at our W-2 form. So if we take a look at our W-2 form, okay, in box one, it says wages, tips, and other compensation. So we have $36,024. So we're gonna place this in line one of our 1040EZ. We're going to put $36,024, okay, and zero cents. Taxable interest is number two, okay. You can see if this total is over $1,500, you cannot use Form 1040EZ. But we know from our information that we saw before, okay, that Jose has $150 in taxable interest income from a savings account. So he's under that $1,500 limit. So on line two, we're going to put $150 and zero cents. This takes us to line three, unemployment compensation and Alaska permanent funds dividends. He doesn't live in Alaska and he didn't say anything about unemployment. So line three is going to be zero. For line four, we are going to add lines one, two, and three. This is the adjusted gross income. When we add the lines up, we get $36,174.00. This takes us to line five. If someone can claim you as a dependent, you are going to check the applicable boxes and enter the amount on the worksheet on the back, but no one can claim Jose. So we are going to skip down below the boxes, and it says if no one can claim you or your spouse if it's a joint return, enter 10000 if single and 20000 if married filing jointly. Jose is single, so we are going to enter $10,000 on line 5. Now we are going on to line 6, which says subtract line 5 from line 4. If line 5 is larger than line 4, enter 0. This is your taxable income. So we need to take a look at which one is bigger. Line 4 is larger than line 5, so that means we are going to subtract. And we get 26,174. Number 7. Federal income tax withheld from forms W-2 and 1099. He doesn't have a 1099, but he does have a W-2. So we're going to flip back to his form W-2, okay, and we're going to look at box 2, where it says federal income tax withheld, and it tells us $3,602.40 was withheld. So now we're going to flip back to our form 1040EZ, and on line 7, we're going to put $3,602.40. Okay. 
Line 8 is split into Part A and Part B. Part A is Earned Income Credit and Part B is Non-Taxable Combat Pay. Jose does not have either of these, so we are going to enter 0 for both. Line 9 tells us to add line 7 and 8A. So we enter $3,602.40. Okay. These are the total payments and credits. Moving on to line 10, that is the tax. You're going to use the amount on line 6 above to find your tax in the tax table in the instructions. And then enter the tax from the table on this line. Flip over to our tax table, which can be found in the instructions. The amount on line 6 was $26,174. So that is the amount we are going to find. But first I want to explain how this works. First we have at least, and then we have but less than. So if your adjusted gross income is at least this number, but less than this number, it's going to show you your tax if you're single, married filing jointly, married filing separately, or head of household. So we're going to have to look for the range that Jose's adjusted gross income falls into. We're going to scroll down through a lot because we need to get to the $26,000 range. So here it is. So now let's try and find the range. Okay. Jose is going to fall between the $26,150 and the $26,200 range, and he's single. So his tax is going to be $3,491. This is the amount that we're going to put on our 1040EZ on line 10. So that's where we're going to enter $3,491.00. Now we're on to the refund or the amount that you owe. You will only fill out one of line 11 or 12 because you can't get a refund and owe money. So we need to look at both of them. If line 9 is larger than line 10, that means that we're getting a refund. If line 10 is larger than line 9, then we owe the government money. So when we look at lines 9 and 10, we see that line 9 is larger. So Jose is getting a refund. When we do the subtraction of our numbers, we find that Jose is getting a refund of $111.40. So we are going to enter that on line 11A. So now most of the form is filled out. So you're able to enter a routing number and an account number for either a checking or a savings account. And then your refund is going to get directly deposited into your bank account. The next section on this form is for third-party designees. Okay, this means that you're going to allow another person to discuss your tax return with the IRS. If you want someone else to be able to speak with the IRS, then you're going to check yes and you're going to fill out this section. Most likely, you're never going to check yes for this because you're going to want to talk to the IRS yourself. Now you're going to provide your signature, okay, the date, and your occupation. And we had said that Jose was an accountant, so we're going to put in an accountant. And we also know his daytime phone number, right? So it's 201 Okay? So that's basically it. If you paid someone to fill out this form, okay, then they're going to fill out the paid preparer section. But you should not be paying anyone to fill out the 1040 easy for you, because now you can do it for yourself. That's it. Just remember to bring your notes to class.